Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, as you all are aware of, hopefully by now, uh, it's a different kind of Sunday where we are reporting on what ha- God has been doing uh, with our youth group, specifically at Mfuge this week. So this isn't going to be a normal sermon. Uh, it's going to be a short summary and just testimony and uh, all those things of what was happening at what's been happening at camp. Uh, so for those who don't know, <coughs> uh, we went to Mfuge. Mfuge is a camp, as I said earlier, that is a summer camp and a missions trip kind of mushed into one thing. Uh, before coming here to First Baptist Church four years ago now, which sounds crazy to think it's been four years now, uh, but before coming here to First Baptist Church, I had never heard of Mfuge. I did not grow up going to Mfuge, uh, but I was um, eager to learn what this program um, consisted of. Uh, and we started going um, every summer then since. And it's been great each time. Uh, we've had the same speaker each year we go, and we like to follow him around uh, at the different universities he goes to uh, because as Pastor Sam had alluded to earlier, there was solid biblical teaching happening there. So that's what Mfuge is. Uh, Mission trip, camp, we get all the good things of both. So I'll be talking a little bit about our ministry site and what we did there and what that was and all those things. So, but there's <clears throat> three things specifically I want to summarize, recap for us. The first is um, our own students' spiritual growth. I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, Second, I want to talk about our ministry site while we were at camp. And then lastly, I want us to, I want to talk about uh, what we were learning as Christ being the matchless one in the main teaching times. Uh, But I'll open this up in prayer before we start. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we praise you for who you are, Lord. We thank we thank you that, that you are the matchless one. Lord, we thank you that you are sovereign over all. You're, you are in control, Lord. You, are, you rule over all, this, all the earth. Lord, nothing happens without you knowing about it. You orchestrate all things, Lord, to work together for, you, for our good, for your glory. We thank you that you are matchless in your sacrifice. We thank you that you are matchless in your forgiveness. We thank you, are ma- we thank you that you are matchless in your obedience when you came to the cross, to the Father. Lord, we thank you for your matchless love. We thank you for who you are, Lord. Apart from you, we know we would be completely hopeless, helpless, Lord, eternally condemned. But we know as Scripture teaches us that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through you alone, Lord. We thank you for your sacrifice on the cross, Lord, and how you have imputed your righteousness upon us when we put our faith in you. We thank you for the hope of the gospel and all of that, uh, that what it brings. New life. Lord, we thank you that you transform our lives so that we may worship and honor you. Lord, I pray for this time uh, that we are all encouraged as a church um, by looking at what you are doing, what you have been teaching our students. Lord, and let's just, I pray that we could respond to you appropriately, Lord, just in worship for your greatness. We love you and pray these things in your name. Amen. All right. So the first item I want us to recap, uh, like I said, is our own students' spiritual growth. Uh, As I had said earlier, I've been here now for four years, um, which is now I've seen students start as a freshman and now graduate from high school, uh, which has been really cool. And, man, 
it's incredible to watch these students grow up, uh, not just grow up in just maturity, but grow up spiritually. I have seen many of them grow up spiritually in many, many ways. Uh, of course, there's always some rough patches in different times, but uh, I have seen them grow in their love for the gospel, grow in their knowledge and being able to articulate the gospel. Uh, I had mentioned a few weeks ago a testimony about this where I've seen two of our students uh, witnessing to another student that was in our youth group and that student eventually coming to know the Lord. Uh, That's just one example amongst many of how God has been working in our students' lives. Uh, And so I'm incredibly thankful for the leaders, all those who help serve the students in that regard. Um, But specifically for camp, uh, we've had some students that have been part of the youth group for a long time, and we've also had newer students who have not been a part of the youth group. And this time at camp was a great opportunity for the students to grow together as a one unified group. And I think that speaks to the maturity of the group. I've um, talked many times with the other youth leaders about how great our group is in the sense that we don't have to worry about um, any craziness happening. There's some craziness that happens, but um, I mean, we just have such a great group of kids. Uh, We are able to trust them. They uh, listen, they um, know what's right and what's wrong. Uh, and the kids that have been part of the youth group for a while were quick to include some of the newer kids in as well. Uh, and I'm thankful that our group is not uh, just different cliques. There's a group over here, a group over here, but we are truly a unified group as a youth group. So I'm incredibly thankful for that. I'm, I'm thankful for their flexibility Uh, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Near the end, our very last full day of camp, two of our kids were uh, tested positive for COVID, and so we had to um, seclude ourselves from the rest of the camp, and they had to, uh, the two kids that were tested had to, unfortunately, uh, quarantine as well. But that caused with some, that that, uh, presents some challenges within itself, and our kids were incredibly flexible with that and went with it, and one of my favorite times Um, was uh, that evening where we had to rearrange our schedule. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as well in a bit. Uh, So uh, at the end of every single evening while we're at camp, we have something called church group time, where at the end of the day, uh, we kind of just come together as a church and we get to reflect on the teaching that we've heard that day, uh, talk about our sites, where we've worked, or just how our days have gone. And one of my favorite times was on Wednesday evening, during our church group time, where we were just learning about how Christ's forgiveness is matchless. And what I had them do, I had them break off into two groups, and they, I asked them to come up with a list of all the many different ways you could describe Christ's matchless forgiveness. What is his matchless forgiveness like? Let's focus on on who God is, see what his forgiveness is like, since that's what we were just learning, Um, and then we have an idea of what our forgiveness needs to look like. Um, And so, there's going to be some differences between our forgiveness and Christ's forgiveness, since he is eternal, He's an eternal God. We are not. Uh, But he is the one we are to be looking to and be transformed into. So this was an awesome exercise. I got to just to see them work together as group, as two different groups, uh, come up with a big list. And this just shows their, um, uh, just how much they've been learning about who, who Christ is. And so I'm going to read this list for you. This is a list that the kids came up with. Um, so, uh, Christ's forgiveness is humble. It's sacrificial. It's merciful. It's limitless. It's loving. It's 
matchless, as the theme says. It's patient, it's kind, it's complete, it's unconditional, it's everlasting, it's eternal, it's open to all, it's willing, it's faithful, it's holy, it's perfect. Christ's matchless love is just, or I should say matchless forgiveness is just, it's gracious, it's powerful, it's trustworthy. It's final. Once Christ pays the punishment for your sin and forgives it, it's final. It's sound, it's unchanging, it's a given, it's available, it's generous, it's never ending, it's awesome. It's abundant, it's essential, it's affectionate, it's motivating, it's encouraging, it's inspiring, it's beautiful, it's transforming. It's instant, it's imputed. That's a fun theological word that we've talked about before in the student ministry and how Christ imputes his righteousness upon us instantly when we put our faith in him. We have fun shirts that say, Uh, imputation at infusation. If you see any students wear that, you know where that came from. Um, Christ's forgiveness is redemptive. It's irrevocable. It's safe. It's absolute. It's glorious. It's meaningful. It's ultimate. It's foundational. And it's wise. So, there were some other descriptors that were listed that evening that I don't have. Uh, But this is uh, the majority of the list that the students came up with. Um, So I was incredibly encouraged by them. We had a good conversation um, that evening. And as I had said earlier, two of the kids, uh, unfortunately, did test positive for COVID at the end of the week. We were thankful to the Lord that it was at the very end of the week, so it didn't really disrupt much of our our, um, time. But because of that, we had to miss... Uh, our whole group missed the last teaching time on Thursday evening. We're, we'll be driving back Friday morning uh, is when we drove back. So that last Thursday evening, we had to miss the last teaching time at camp. And so what ended up happening is we rallied all the kids underneath a big tree outside. So we were outside, and uh, the pastor, the teaching uh, pastor there for the camp, sent me his notes, and he was like, all right, you could teach my sermon to your group. Uh, And so I did. The first time I opened up his notes was when I was in front of the students about to teach it. So it it went well. Uh, But again, that just speaks to the kids' flexibility. And then later that night, we had a time of reflection where I just asked questions, and then they wrote down in their journals things that they've been learning, um, what God has been teaching them, and they wrote, wrote it down, and then later that evening, also underneath this tree, outside, with our group by ourselves, um, we just had a time of sharing. So a little bit similar to what you heard earlier, uh, but there was a lot more kids sharing as well. Uh, just, it was so encouraging just to hear how God is teaching them, um, spe- specifically about different things. Uh, you heard from Zeke of his matchless forgiveness. Uh, there was other students talking about a variety of different things, specifically what God has been teaching them, specifically that week and even in a broader sense. We had one student uh, say that I think God is telling me that I should be a, a, either a pastor or a missionary when I grow up. Um, and so it's um, just really encouraging. That was a really encouraging evening, even though it wasn't what we expected it to look like that evening. Uh, and God used it and. and as a very special time for us as our group. Um, so second, I need to hurry up a little bit. Uh, second, our, I want to talk about our ministry site. So we uh, worked at two different places. Our group was split up into two groups, and we worked at two different thrift stores. Uh, and the thrift stores was called Miracle Hill. It was the same thing, just two different locations. Uh, and this is a nonprofit organization um, that helps run homeless shelters, 
um, they have food pantries, they have an addiction recovery programs with transitional uh, housing available for anyone who finishes the program, and they also have uh, help with foster care and work in children's ministry in that sense, uh, and helping kids get connected with different homes. And so this is a Christian-run organization, uh, and they have these thrift stores to help um, fund it. And so what we did as a group, as I said, our group was split up into two different locations, and uh, we helped organize clothes, we helped um, put things out on the floor, we helped price items, which I was amazed that they said, here's a price gun, um, now you need to look at an item in the bin, just guess what you think it should be cost worth, and then put the price on and put it on the floor, and we gave that job to our students. <laughs> um, and, and so it worked out well. Uh, and we had another group help put out mulch in the front of the store, around the store as well. They were working out in the hot sun. It was a very hot week that week. Um, the first day when the one group was putting out mulch, we weren't provided with any tools. So I heard that, I'm thankful that this wasn't my group. <laughs> but it was Pastor Sam's group. I heard that they had to work with cardboard boxes to move the mulch and just their hands. Uh, so the next day, I'm thankful that we did get a little bit more tools to help finish that. Uh, but these are just some of the things we did. And uh, we did try to strike up conversations with some of the employees whenever we had an opportunity. I got, some, I got an opportunity to talk um, with another employee named Jacob, same name as mine, uh, about just spiritual matters, where he goes to church, talked about theology a bit. And I haven't told the students this, uh, or any of the leaders yet, but I did receive a nice email from Miracle Hill uh, just expressing their thankfulness uh, for our group coming. So I want to read that really quick uh, for you all. So this is an email that was sent to Fuge Camps, and then Fuge sent it to me, just so that we could be encouraged by it as well. Uh, so it says, Hey there, wow, thank you so much for the students you sent to our two thrift stores. Yesterday, I ran into Pam, store manager, uh, and she was so thankful for the work your students did. She kept talking about how they had such a strong work ethic and were so obedient to do the things she was asking of them. Your students really did make a huge difference here at Miracle Hill. With our thrift stores being understaffed, it was so encouraging to see how happy Pam was with the work that your students did. How, uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the summer. So I was really encouraged by that as well. All right, finally, lastly, as we're summarize, or as we're wrapping up this uh, recap, I'm going to talk about what we were learning um, in the main teaching times. Uh, so I want to quickly turn to the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 9. The first main full day, we talked about Christ's matchless sacrifice uh, and how he is matchless in all things. And so we looked at the Old Testament and the sacrifices done in the Old Testament. We looked at um, the high priest in the Old Testament and how Christ now is the better and new high priest for us today. Uh, but I want to read uh, from Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, uh, talking about Christ's matchless sacrifice. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through a greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by the means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Christ is a better sacrifice than the uh, goats and calves and rams and all the sin and burnt offerings done in the Old Testament. 
And we saw that he is better because he is a final sacrifice. So I want to uh, pick up and continue reading in verse 24 through 25 of the same chapter. 24, it says, For Christ has entered not into uh, holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. So Christ now, currently, what is his work now? He died on the cross for our sins, but what is he doing now? Currently, he is now interceding for us uh, before God the Father on our behalf because he was and is the perfect and matchless sacrifice. Uh, Second, um, we talked about matchless uh, forgiveness. Uh, So that's in the Matthew passage, Matthew chapter 18. And here I have Matthew 18, 27 specifically, uh, but really we have to look at the entire, uh, the entire parable, and we're not going to read the entire parable, but here we have the parable on forgiveness, right? And in verse 21 of chapter 18, uh, it says, Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As m- Many as seven times, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. And then that launches Christ into this parable where there's this uh, king who, uh, who he has a servant who owes him a large debt, right? And he's going to throw him to jail and everything because he can't pay back this debt. But the servant comes to the king and says, Have mercy on me, I cannot pay you back. And then what does the king do? He has mercy on him. He forgives him. Verse 27, And out of pity for him, the master that the servant released from, uh, released him and forgave him the debt. And then we see this servant acting as a hypocrite where he, there's a fellow servant um, who has a smaller, much smaller debt. He's not able to repay him back and uh, he's not acting forgiving. Uh, he's not taking the example of his master. And so then the master then also uh, takes back his forgiveness and ultimately punishes him because he did not forgive his fellow servants. He says, verse 32, You wicked servants, I forgave you all the debts because you pleaded with me, and you should not, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servants as I had mercy on you. So this was the day when we talked about Christ's matchless forgiveness. How, where, when Christ forgives us, it's, he's forgiving so much more than what we could possibly forgive to our fellow man. And that, we talked about the heaviness of sin there. And we need to understand the, the, the weight of sin in order to understand his forgiveness. And then Colossians, we looked also at Colossians 3.13. At the end of that, it says, As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. So, have you recognized and responded to the matchless sacrifice of Christ through faith? That's a question for you all. Have you recognized this matchless sacrifice? Have you recognized and responded to the matchless forgiveness that Christ offers? And then the last one we looked at was matchless obedience. And then that was uh, Philippians chapter 2. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. Let me get there really quick. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 specifically, uh, where we see this is one of the Christological passages where we see Christ humbling himself to the point of death, even death on the cross, when he takes on humanity upon himself to be the matchless sacrifice, to matchlessly forgive, but then we see him do this because he is matchlessly being obedient to God the Father. Uh, Verse 8, And being found in human form, referring to Christ, he humbled himself even to become obedient to, to the point of death, even death on a cross. So we see how all of these three things are all actually intertwined together. Um, He is matchlessly obedient to be the matchless sacrifice. 
uh, so that he may matchlessly forgive us and that we could respond. There's so many more things we could talk about, but obviously uh, we don't have time. But uh, it was an encouraging time at camp, and I'm excited for next year. So I'll pray for us, and then we'll go uh, and worship uh, through song. Lord, we love you, and we praise you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for the work that you're doing in our students' lives. Lord, we thank you for who you are, and that we have an opportunity to respond to you. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and the hope that he brings through the gospel. I pray these things in your name. Amen.